Hi, everybody. All right, some electrical foibles to take care of before we get to the wings. Uh, the three dimmer switches, or the three dimmer dials I have are just old guitar tone pots that I had, spare ones, back when I used to fiddle around with making guitars a long time ago. Uh, I need to replace those. They just don't work, right? And I don't have diodes set in, and while being cheap, I wired them basically all in series, including the grounds. So whenever you adjust one, it automatically sort of uh, screws up the voltage coming out of another one. So I need to add diodes to each one of those so that that doesn't happen. And now we are over at the engine monitor. So I thought, you know, why aren't the flaps working? I've got the flap sensor hooked up. Everything is was fine. Well, I didn't program it into the right position. So there's five sensor positions that you can hook into your engine monitor. When I say five sensor positions, basically like a serial uh, position, basically, you know, three wire. So there's a, 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 a high, a low, and then the ground, right? So uh, I just reprogram it to the right sensor. Everything is good. All that work wasted for nothing. All right, that's not what's important getting on to the wings. So again, I apologize for not for basically skipping over the entire other wing. Uh, but now we're getting on to this one, which is the big one, which is the right wing. So we're, I've uh, started by priming the inboard skin. That's the one that goes on first. Here I am taking care of a little bit of extra dimpling that I didn't get done. Make sure everything is dimpled. My god. And then, of course, cleaning the inside of the wing, because once this is on, this is now its own little closed-in kingdom. Now, having done the other wing, I can already go ahead and tell you all the things not to do. Here I am in my... There's my warrior <laughs> pose. Again, you know, in a two-hour work session, hold that pose for like 30 minutes. You're going to be in so much pain. Uh, that's when I realized, you know what else is going to work? That's right, a chair. So, uh, first things first, uh, go, uh, what I suggest is, and this, because this is the easiest way to do it, uh, is go across the entire back first. When I say back, I mean the aft row here that connect to the rear spar. Do all those rivets first. Those are the hardest ones to get to. And I wear, I think, a 32 sleeve. And I'm just about able to get up there, no problem, as you can see. Now, getting up to there, you are going to have to slide your hand up underneath, or arm up underneath uh, the skin to, to get it up there. Uh, you want to do that, of course, without bending the metal to where it makes it crease. As long as it's like bending, bending, but not creasing, you're fine. One of the ways that I prevent that from happening, so like if I need to get the very top row there, right, but I'm worried about bending the skin, I will put a Clico in down one of the ribs, as you can see there, just a couple of positions below where I'm working. That way, it, as I am sort of bending the skin with my arm, reaching up there to do it, I don't actually bend that skin. Plus, that keeps the skin flat against the rib flange, which which is where it's supposed to be, because if you want, you start setting rivets with the two pieces of metal, not, you know, touching each other, uh, then that could lead to some bad things. So yeah, my advice, go across the aft row first. That's the easiest thing to do. Of course, that's also if you have it in this orientation. Because uh, after that, it's just start working down the ribs. Now, the cluster of ribs, where the wing walk is over at the most inboard side, that is a pain. I'm not going to lie, there is no way around it, that is an actual pain. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's it's a pain, because you're, you're having to zigzag your arm through different ribs at different levels, through different holes in the, in the ribs, and uh, you will wind up, your arms will just get creased from having to hold them in there. It's going to look like you got some kind of weirdo, I don't know, tourniquet fetish. All right, so once you are done with the back, you just start going down all the ribs, and you go down past where the J-channel, you can see I'm putting it in there, uh, you can go past where the J-channel is, past it, uh, and do the very first rib uh, rivet after that. Why? 
because once you insert that J channel, you can't really rivet on the one that's beneath it. It blocks it. So you got to do those first, then insert it. You know how I know? Because on the other wing, all of the rivets underneath the J channel, or at least the first one, uh, are now pop rivets. All right. In the next couple of videos, we're just riveting all day long. So thanks for joining me, everyone. See you soon.